Diplo seems to be elaborating on his sexuality. I talked to Nick Cannon about his big family and his new big project. Mariah Angelique stops by the studio. We break down the songs trending on Twitter and the ones in 2003, 20 years ago before Twitter was even a thing. Happy Tuesday, April 11th. Welcome to Billboard News, and we're starting the day off with one of our good friends. Hey, Nick, thanks for chatting with us again. Man, happy to be here. Your name uh, sound like I named you. You sound like one of my kids, man. You got the <laughs> coolest name in the world. Wait, dude, stop. That's real talk. Like, that's my, that's my vibe right there. Tetris Cannon? That'd be crazy. Tetris Cannon. Name my next kid after me. Iconic. Well, don't worry. We'll get back to the topic of your next kid. But let's talk about this new show you got coming, The Daily Cannon. I've done so many different things in media, so I'm always looking for the next wave. Always figuring out what, you know, everybody's paying attention to. And this, this amp thing is taking off and, like, like, nobody's business. My show can be just as popping as a listener's show, or they could chime in the in real time, live, and they want to comment, whether they want to call in, you know, whether they say, hey, Nick, check out my show after your show. Like, it's never been done before, man. And, and I, I feel like because of what this generation is on, it's not, a, it's no longer about, you know, dictating to them what is hot and what it should be. It's about creating the experience with them. So this is, you know, this is the best way to do it each and every day, Monday through Friday, every morning. And what type of artists and music are you hoping to highlight? I mean, I hope everybody pull up, you know, that's the thing. It's new, it's innovative, it, it is the future. You know, I, I've had, you know, radio shows before, I've had talk shows before, and those are like old, stale models. I mean, I love them for what they are, but they're kind of like dinosaurs. I believe this is like the new, faster, really the more entertaining way to, to engage with your audience. And it's so dope you have Abby De La Rosa, radio personality herself, and mother to some of your kids joining you. How's that gonna be? Man, I, again, it's something that's never been done before. <laughs> you know, and I'm super excited about it uh, because I think, you know, as interested as people are uh, in my personal life, man, it gives, it's gonna give you a real glimpse of the reality of it. One of the reasons, you know, why I fell in love with, with her and her movement is just because she is such a dope DJ uh, and, and personality. So it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be fly. Now, do you think the other moms will wanna be involved too? All they gotta do is create their own amp channel. <laughs> See, I think it should be like wild and out and all the mamas could roast you. Like, could you take it? Oh, that's, that's a good idea, man. <laughs> Everybody just roasting me, you know, me on one team by myself and six of them over there. <laughs> that, that'd be lit. <laughs> we definitely got to see about that, bro. Now, can you stick around? Because we got to chat about them babies and Mimi. Now, we know Nick Cannon gets busy, but it's Diplo and his friends who've been talking about sex, baby. Sure, I've got a blowjob from a guy before. You sh you're sure that's happened? Yeah. And you, you just don't remember? I mean... You're not being... You're saying... You're, you're not committing to it, but you're yeah. saying you're sure it happened. Diplo made that confession, but now he seems to be elaborating on his sexuality a bit more. <laughs> Diplo posted these sexy photos of the mystery lady to promote his new song with Dove Cameron and Johnny Blue Skies coming out on Friday. And arms that can hold you best they all like you. He was beating those bisexual allegations until this post on Twitter. He shared that Rise Bisexual Warrior was trending with a side eye emoji. Okay, well whatever Diplo decides to do in his bedroom is all good by me. We support a secure king. And so does Diplo's buddy Orville Peck. They attended the GLAAD Awards together. I know because I was there. And Orville told People, I will say that he is a very sweet guy, and he's very open-minded, and I think he just, like any of us in the world, should be allowed the freedom and the space to explore whoever he is going to be or wants to be, and none of us need to police it or worry about it. He can have his own path and journey. I haven't seen Latin hit maker Mariah Angelique since Latin Music Week in Miami. But luckily, Nina Rohani got to sit with her and talk about inspiration and her recent success. I've always grown up listening to music because of my mom. She has a love for music since forever. And she named me Mariah because supposedly she, um, Mariah Carey is like her favorite artist. And it was like between Aaliyah and Mariah because that's how much she like loved mm. R&B and stuff. So it just so happened that when I was born, she like made me obsessed with music. And when I was like nine years old, 10 is when I realized like, 
Yo, I want to be up there. I want to be on that screen. Like, that could be me. We always know as artists, like, oh, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Like, mm -hmm. I always believed in myself and I believed in all my music. But I didn't know it was going to take off like that. Perreito. Like, I believed in the record, but I didn't know it was going to be, like, so, like, oh, shit, it's your biggest record. Pe, perreito, pe, pe, perreito. For the full interview, head to Billboard.com. And speaking of Mariah Carey, I'm asking Nick Cannon about his fabulous ex in just a bit. But first, let's check out what songs you guys are talking about on Twitter. Tyler the Creator continues his reign on hot trending songs. I have a 24 7. A 7. Tyler the Creator spends his second week at number one on Billboard's Hot Trending Songs chart powered by Twitter for the chart dated April 15th. Tyler has multiple tracks charting this week off his deluxe album, Call Me If You Get Lost, The Estate Sale, which was released on March 31st, including What A Day holding down the number two spot. What a day. His Ben Staples collab, Stuntman, at number seven. And Warp Talk featuring ASAP Rocky at number eight. Elsewhere, Fade and Young Miko's Classy 101 comes in at number four. While Jimin's Like Crazy rounds out the top five. Billboard's Hot Trending Songs chart powered by Twitter tracks global music related trends and conversations in real time across Twitter, viewable over the last 24 hours or past seven days. And hey, you got such an incredible tribe. Will we see it grow anymore? I don't know, man. I have no idea. <laughs> I think I'm good right now, though. We had a bit of a viral moment last time we chatted about your future with kids. So how are you feeling about fatherhood again these days? Throughout my life, as much as I've tried to control the narrative and, and uh, be strategic and calculated in all my steps, God surprises me every time, man. <laughs> and, and, you know, as much as I want to say uh, I'm done, I'm not done, I, like, Man, there, there, there's so many miracles that have operated in my life. So uh, I, I don't know what's next when it comes to that place, but I, I know I'm happy and content where I am right now. I think that's funny. Like, I think that's what I told you. Like, I'm good right now. <laughs> yeah. and then the, the second part was like, who knows what's going to happen though? So again, I, I give you the same answer. And speaking of viral moments, you also said recently Mariah Carey is the love of your life. And I won't make you get into all that, but I am a lamb. So has anybody ever asked you your favorite Mariah song or like top three? Yeah, yeah she's going to hate when I say this. Uh, well, I can't wait. She always thinks I'm joking when I say this. Someday. I'll probably play emotions more because uh, it's just always a vibe and me and Monroe love that, that song the oh. same so someday was that was my rec like you know I remember her first single was uh, Vision of Love obviously and you know I was like oh that's kind of cool but it felt a little older for me you know I think I was probably like 12 or whatever uh, and then the second single was Someday and it, and it was like it was funny because I remember my mom was like, oh, you like that cute little girl in the, in the video or something. I was like, no, I like the grown up. <laughs> the oh my God, that's wild. Of course you did. If I'm talking about in recent songs, it's probably uh, uh, the, it's a rap. And that's only because I produced that, right? Whoa, I didn't even know that. And now it's had a whole resurgence. Yeah, yeah, that's the song. As of recently now, it's become a, a a number one hit all over again. And really it's funny that the story behind that, it was like, I was just, I was in the studio at the crib, just messing around with some chords and going through samples and stuff like that. And she came in the room and started humming them. And the, 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 the. And I was like, yo, that's the joint. We were just playing around. It's like, yo, we should do a song about it. Like if I came home hella late and then you kicking me out the house. <laughs> and wow. You know, cut to a decade later, everybody's on TikTok doing the choreography and stuff to it. So it's kind of cool. And now you and Monroe got to do a TikTok to Emotions. That's amazing, man. Well, thanks again for calling in and can't wait for the Daily Canon. No doubt. Appreciate you. Tetris. Before we head out, let's look back at the year 2003. I was a varsity soccer player and a cheerleader. How do you like that balance? And speaking of balance, here are some of the best collabs from 20 years ago. It was the year Beyonce and Jay-Z were crazy in love. Outcast had us all shaking it like a Polaroid picture. 
And Christina Aguilera taught us to be a fighter. Welcome back to 2003. Hard to believe it's been 20 years since we're out rocking out to some absolute classics. This week, we're looking at some of the biggest songs from that year. Today, it's all about the collaboration. Black Eyed Peas and Justin Timberlake kick off our journey at number 67 on the 100 list. Where is the love? Where is the love? Justin co-wrote the Grammy-nominated song and did all the background vocals. Beyonce and Sean Paul got us all revved up with their sexy single, Baby Boy, coming in at number 35. And to cool us off from all the heat those two brought, a completely different sound with country stars Alan Jackson and Jimmy Buffett, who had us dreaming about the end of the day, coming in at number 28. I don't care. It's five o'clock somewhere. But let's be honest. This powerhouse duo had one of the most unforgettable songs of the year. The Queens, Britney Spears, and Madonna going head to head against the music, their hit coming in at number 19. This club hopping collab has us getting as low as we could go. Lil John and the East Side Boys featuring Yin Yang Twins Get Low comes in at number 7. So which one had you rocking out in 2003? Let us know in the comments and come back tomorrow where we're looking at which artist debuted for the first time in 2003. There's some big hits you don't want to miss. That's today's show. Make sure you come back tomorrow to get to know more about Gracie Abrams and we run down some of the best debut singles of 2003. I'm Tetris Kelly and this is Billboard News.